Good afternoon, House of Destiny. Thank you for tuning in with us today. Worship with us as we reverence the true and living God. I give you my head. I give you my heart. I give you my song and I give you my praise. It's all I have. It's all I've got to give to you in my pain. I open my hands and I open my heart. I surrender these fears that have torn us apart. It's all I have, it's all I've got to give to you in my pain. Oh, I open my hand and I give you my heart, I give you my song. It's all I have, it's all I've got to give to you in my pain. Oh, I open my hands and I open my heart. I surrender these fears that have torn. It's all I've got to give to you.
touched me And you made a way for me to come boldly All you want from me is my heart So I let go of everything that's holding me back I surrender to your love Jesus, I surrender to your love, Savior, I surrender to your will, Jesus, I surrender I want to take a moment today to thank you for your partnership and your generous giving to our Boots on the Ground partnership. When you choose to be a monthly partner with us through Boots on the Ground, you are fulfilling the greatest commission of all, to bring the gospel to the darkest places on earth. Through Boots on the Ground, you are changing lives around the world with life-saving surgeries, feeding programs, and education. If you aren't yet a partner, I encourage you to click the partner link above. Thank you for your love and your generosity. Welcome, House of Destiny. Welcome to all of you that are joining us for the very first time. You are going to be so blessed today. We have a very special guest and uh, a, a good friend that's, that's joining us as well. And, um, you know, we know that Jesus Christ is on the throne, no matter what's going on in the world today. And so where two or three are gathered in his name, he's, Jesus is right in the midst of us. And when you've got Jesus in your midst, what do you have? I'll let you answer that question. You have whatever you need. I'll, I'll join in with you on that. And uh, so before we get any farther today, and uh, again, you know, what I would encourage people to do is maybe call a few people right now, text a few people right now. I know I did and said, you've got to get in on this broadcast. It's just going to be so special. It's going to be so good. And it's going to reach people, you know, that that may seem unreachable, but God knows how to get to us all. But we want to honor the Lord first and foremost. That's what, the, that's what our lives are all about. We're made in his image and likeness to worship him, to know him. And you know, knowing him is to worship him because he's, he's majesty and we love him. You know, he's not a taskmaster. Our God is not that way. He loves us so much. Matter of fact, he gave his very life so that we might live. How low did he go? He went to the bowels of hell. Now, how? tell me something. Can you serve someone that is 
that much of a servant to you? The answer is absolutely yes. When we take an offering, what we should all do is cheer. People say, oh, there goes that preacher asking for money again. No, when we take an offering to God, we should cheer. We should be so thankful, so grateful, so faithful, and you are House of Destiny, and I want to thank you on behalf of Jane and the family and the team. I want to thank you for your faithfulness. Now, right there on the player, below the player, you see the red link, and you know how it goes. If you're joining us for the first time and you would like to sow into this good ground, you can text to give, you can mail in a check, you can call in, you can click the red link. It's just so simple. Avail yourself. The main thing is, from the heart, worship the Lord. And while you're doing that, listen, I was emailing one of our, uh, someone that emailed us for prayer and information, one of our partners. And I did a little research for them, and I don't normally do that. Mainly, my, my role there is to, to answer prayer. But I said all that to say this. When I, when I sent this to that dear, dear one, I said, I'm going to share this on the broadcast. It's so good. Many of you have heard portions of it before. It's very a very small part of Kim prophesying in 2007 from Redding, California. This has everything to do with our worship and our offering right now. So listen to me intently, please. April 4th, 2007, Kim's prophesying. And he, and he says this, you've heard this so many times. Think about when he said this, 2007, 12 years ago. Trump shall become a trumpet. Says the Lord, I will raise up the trump to become a trumpet and Bill Gates will open up the gate of a financial realm for the church, says the Spirit of God. In 1967, there was a great revolution, but God said the revolution that you are going to experience is going to be greater than anything that's ever happened. How can you not get excited about that? Number one, did our prophet prophesy about President Trump and he becoming a trumpet? And the answer is yes, fulfilled in front of the whole world's eyes. But number two, Kim went on and prophesied about our financial realm. And he prophesied that even Bill Gates would open up a gate of financial, uh, financial realm for the church. Now, I never try to figure out prophecy because every time I do, I mess up. But here's what I want you to know in this brief few seconds is that God is in the business of saving lives, of healing and redeeming and setting people free. And he's going to put finances in the hands of his church, in the hands of his people, not for any other purpose. Of course, he gives us things to enjoy, but so that we can do good works. And so a massive move and power of God's spirit will, will just ripple around the world and through the, and through the faithfulness of God's people and an ambassadorship of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. People are going to be transformed and lives and families and nations are going to be transformed. So as we're giving right now, I want you to have hope. The world is full of doom and gloom. But one thing about Kim Clement, one thing about the House of Destiny, which he started, is hope, is hope prophecy, which is a bubbling forth, and it's always good news. Even when there is some judgment in the word of the Lord, you know what? God is a God of redemption. So thank you again, House of Destiny. Now, before I pray with you, I want to read a quick little testimony. Thank you for reposting the videos of your father, Don A., Kim Clement, putting on his mantle. 2009 was a significant time for me also. I have watched them multiple times over the past year or so. It is a thing of epic proportions, being awakened to see the size and scope of those who have loved and prayed for me when I had no idea who I was. 
It brings me to almost an embarrassing realization that although I felt so lost and alone, there was so much more for me. I know I will someday meet your father and reward him myself, but for now I will honor his memory through words. May this email find your family well. All of my thanks and blessings to you, Tina. Now, before I pray with you and we pray with you, I want to call up our dear friend. Our dear friend Greg Work is here with us. And uh, Greg, I think if it's okay, let's bring Remy up as well. And I want to pray just a simple prayer. And when I receive the offering, as I do many times, I pray, we pray on purpose, Pastor Greg and Remy, for God to open up the windows of heaven. Uh, please join me. Uh, over his people, God is in the business of supplying all of our needs. And... Uh, we're going to shift in about a few seconds to what's next in this broadcast, which nobody wants to miss. But right now, I want you to open up your heart and miracles should start right now when we release our faith in an offering to God and believe for a supernatural. So Lord, we pray right now that you will bless your people. And Lord, I know that there are, there are checks in the mail. We know that you have ways of blessing your faithful people. And that isn't perfect people, that's faithful people. We're perfect in you. You have ways that we could never dream of. You have people that we will meet. You have doors that you are going to open. Don't say I've heard this before because God is a now God and God is a faith God. So receive this dear saints of God. Keep your hearts open and just stay faithful to God and don't quit in Jesus' name. Amen. I am so blessed. Good to see you, Pastor Fa. And a little pumped up. Yeah? Because you guys have absolutely <laughs> blessed me today. And I'm going to get out of here because I want all the time to go for what's coming up next. Yes, sir. But uh, our dear friend Greg War is here. New brother to me, yes, Brother sir. Remy. Yes, sir. And I'm, I'm going to let him pronounce his last name. It's as bad as Fashudo, believe me, or as good as, as beautiful as Fashudo. But anyway, I love you guys. Be blessed. I'm going to see you on the other side, okay? All right, Not of heaven. I mean, of life. <laughs> yeah, you're not I, dying you know, on the side, broadcast yeah. or something. All right. Okay. Take All right. over. It's my uh, distinct honor to uh, introduce you to a friend, a hero of this nation, served 13 years for me. 13 years, 13 years yeah. in his SEAL teams. Remy is a anomaly today that I, I am hoping uh, that God is going to begin to change that because I'm noticing that the Lord is raising up men like and, and women like Remy who are not your, quote, typical communicators of the Word of God. And I got to say about Remy today that there is, there, there is an openness and a vulnerability that Remy preaches from that is unlike anything I have seen in my time. And today you are going to receive something significant by this warrior. Uh, he's also an actor. He's also tip. You're still a Nigerian prince, yeah, you right? Better, you better get it right. Absolutely. I said it. <laughs> so I want to turn this over right now to my good friend and a hero to this nation, Remy Adeleke. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, everybody. Uh, I want to thank you all for having me. Uh, Pastor, thank you for having me, Brother Greg. And it's an honor to be on the show today. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get straight into the message that I have for you today. And I'm going to be transparent. We're just going to have a talk. You know, I'm not going to get crazy. We're going to have a nice little talk. So, But with the talk, we're going to open up the word. So my opening scripture is going to be Mark chapter 421. Again, that's Mark chapter 421. And then after we read that, we're going to jump to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10. And we're going to merge those two scriptures together and we're going to use them as the foundation of our message. Amen. Amen. I heard you say. <laughs> then Jesus asked them, would anyone light a lamp and then put it under a basket or under a bed? Of course not. A lamp is placed on a stand where its light will shine. 
For everything that is hidden will eventually be brought into the open and every secret will be brought to light. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. The key focus of that scripture is a rhetorical question that Jesus asks and the answer that he gives. And that is this. Would anyone light a lamp and then place it under a basket or under a bed? And his response is no, because that's not the purpose of a lamp. That's not the purpose of light. The purpose of light is to be placed on a stand where its light will shine. I want you to keep that in the back of your mind because I'm going to reference that throughout this message. Our second scripture is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10. And it reads as follows. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpieces. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. The key focus of that scripture is we, you, me, every single person under the sound of my voice. If you have received Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, you are a masterpiece who has been created anew in Christ Jesus so you can do the good things he planned for you long ago. I want you to keep that in your mind because I'm going to reference that again. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to preach your word. I thank you for every single person that's under the sound of my voice now. Holy Spirit, I do not have the ability to speak this message. You know as well as I do how unprepared I am to speak your word, Jesus. But I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would speak through me. Give me the words to penetrate the hearts of every single person that is under the sound of my voice, Lord, for the people who are hearing, who are struggling, who are hopeless, who are depressed. Illuminate them with this message. Shower them with your peace, your joy, your love, your grace, your mercy, God. Do what you did in my life and transform them into the new masterpiece that you have called for them to be, Jesus. And we will give you the glory and you the praise for you are worthy and you are awesome. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is my belief that one of the greatest masterpieces that God has ever created is physical light. Physical light is a masterful art that God has created and displayed in his world for us to see and for us to use. We bask in the warmth of light when we stand by a fire. We marvel at the beauty of light when we stand on the beach and watch a sunset. It is only by the use of light that we as human beings are able to see some of the most astounding art that this world has to offer. Literal art, such as Picasso, Rembrandt, Da Vinci, if you got money. <laughs> but also figurative art, such as the birth of a brand new child, the smiles of newlyweds on their wedding day, or the awesome sight of a city skyline at night. Light is amazing. Why? Because light is an art that has been precisely created by the greatest artist of all time, Jesus Christ himself. That's why when Jesus asked a rhetorical question, would anyone light a lamp and then place it under a basket or under a bed? He responded with a resounding no. That's not the purpose of light. It's not meant to be hidden. It's meant to shine. It's meant to illuminate the darkness. As Jesus said in verse 21, it's meant to be placed on a stand where its light will shine. We may not realize this, but everything that we as human beings do revolves around light. From the moment we wake up in the morning to the moment we go to bed, we are all using some form of light to see, to move, to navigate, to use the bathroom, to clean up after you use the bathroom, hopefully clean up well after you use the bathroom, to take a shower, to do your chores. And all the things that we do in our, on our daily basis revolves around light. I want to be able to properly share this message without some form of light penetrating this room. I want to be able to see my notes. When I speak, I like to look people in the eyes so that I can engage them and they can engage me and I can get nonverbal feedback. So I want to be able to share this message about light without light. As a matter of fact, we can go as far as to say that without this masterful art called light, our entire ecosystem would collapse. Everything would fall apart. You all have heard of the scientific term called photosynthesis, right? 
Well, for those of you who've been out of high school for the last 30 years, let me refresh your memory. Photosynthesis is a process that plants use to convert light from the sun into energy in order to thrive and grow. So without light penetrating this glow, we want to have fruits and vegetables. Therefore, we want to have fruits and vegetables. <laughs> without light penetrating this glow, we want to have, have herbivores with, which eat fruits and vegetables. Therefore, we want to have steak and ribs and Phil's barbecue and all the other stuff that we like to eat. Without light penetrating this glow, we want to have trees to convert carbon dioxide into oxygen, so therefore we want to be able to breathe. So we can draw the inference that without light penetrating this globe, our entire ecosystem would collapse. Everything would fall apart. Now, when I was working on this message, I was fascinated by all the different things that I was learning about light and science and journals and all of these different things that I was reading. And the more I read, the more I decided, you know what, I want to go to the scriptures. I want to see what the Bible has to say about the use of light. And as I went to the scriptures, it blew my mind how many references there were to physical light from Genesis to Revelations. As a matter of fact, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 5, it says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. In Matthew chapter 2, it says that the Magi who, who presented the, the infant Jesus with gifts, it says that they were navigated or they were guided to Jesus from light that emanated from a star. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, 16, it says that God lives in light so brilliant that no human being can approach him. And in the last book of the entire Bible, in the book of Revelations, it says in a new heaven and in a new earth, there will be no sun or moon to light the earth, but Jesus Christ himself, the Lamb of God, will be the light that illuminates the globe. And there are so many of the scriptures, my friend, what God tells us about the importance and the use of physical light. Light ain't no joke. Now, I'm going to get to the gospel in a second. I'm just setting this foundation, so please just bear with me. I got one more scientific thing to touch on before I get to my testimony and we get further, into, further down this rabbit hole. In order for us to have a better understanding about light, it's very important for us to have an understanding of light's diametric opposite, and that is darkness. So wherever you are in the world, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor if you can kind of play along with me, but be safe about it. And what I'm going to ask you to do is if you could turn out all the lights in your room. Now, please, if somebody falls and trips, don't call up the station and assume. We got to get the liabilities ready, right? <laughs> but if you can, just try and get it as dark as you can in your room, but don't move around. See, 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 in darkness, we're restricted. We, we can't move as much as we're able to move in a light. Along with, with, with darkness being restrictive, my friends, darkness can also be very, very awkward. If you're, if you're really sitting in darkness right now outside of, of the screen that you're watching through, but if you're really sitting in darkness right now, doesn't it seem a bit awkward to be sitting in darkness when you have access to light? Huh? Doesn't it? Doesn't it seem a little bit unnatural? Now, for those of you who like to sit in darkness for, for 30 to 40 minutes and, and twiddle your thumbs, it may not seem unnatural right now, but let's say you did this for hours or, or days where you just sat in a dark room. You, we will all draw the inference that it is unnatural for us to sit and move and thrive in physical darkness. Why? Because God didn't create us as human beings to live in physical darkness. God created us as human beings to live in physical light. Now, along with darkness being restrictive, awkward, and unnatural, darkness can also be very, very dangerous. That's why I told you, wherever you are, if the lights are out, don't move, stay put. The majority of crimes that take place in the world take place where and when there is no light. The majority of rapes, murders, drunken driving, theft, all takes place, for the most part, under the cover of darkness. 
Job sums this up clearly when he says in, in chapter 24, 13, wicked people rebel against the light. They refuse to acknowledge his ways or stay in its path. The murderer rises in the early dawn to kill the poor and needy. At night, he is a thief. The adulterer waits for twilight saying, Nothing, no one will see me then. He hides his face so no one will know him. Thieves break into houses at night and sleep in the daytime. They are not acquainted with the light. You guys could turn the lights on wherever you are in the world. So not only is light important for our day-to-day -day activities, my friends, but, but this masterful art that God created is also important for our safety because where there is physical darkness, there is always a potential for physical danger. And when there is a potential for physical danger, there is always a potential for physical death. So here's where we tie all of this together because I know some of you guys are like, okay, I'm just ready to get to the point where well, I'm going to get to it right now. I've been saved for going on 11 years. And in my 11 years of knowing the Lord, there are many things that I've learned about him. But the one thing that I learned about him that sticks out to me and that is very relevant to this message is this fact. God will often use physical things to help us to understand spiritual truths. I'll say that again. God will use physical things such as light, such as darkness, such as winds and waves and tornadoes and all of these things to help us to understand spiritual things. Paul explains this in Romans 1.20 when he says, ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature so they have no excuse for not knowing God. So what Paul is saying in that scripture under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit is that it is through physical things such as light, such as darkness, such as mountains and, and tornadoes and winds and space and humans and mothers and fathers and, and children that we as human beings are able to understand invisible things such as the invisible divine nature of God. Therefore, not only does the Bible talk about light and darkness in a physical sense, my friends, but the Bible often talks about light and darkness in a spiritual sense. As a matter of fact, the Bible will often use physical light and physical darkness to explain spiritual light and spiritual darkness. For example, uh, in the Bible, good is referred to as light and evil is referred to as darkness. God is referred to as light. I told you earlier that God lives in light so brilliant that no human being can approach him. And Satan and demons are referred to as agents of the kingdom of darkness. The word of God itself is referred to as a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And hell is referred to by Jesus on multiple occasions as outer darkness. Righteousness, holiness, and obedience to God is referred to as living in the light. And sin, disobedience, and immorality is referred to as living in darkness or dark living. And my friends, just as it's dangerous for us to live in physical darkness, just as it's dangerous for us to try to walk down the streets of the Bronx in the middle of the night, just as it's dangerous for us to try to walk through the woods in pitch black darkness with no flashlight, it is very dangerous for us to live in spiritual darkness. So, so, so if Paul is telling us that, that God speaks to us through, through physical things, then what is it that you think God is trying to tell? What is the most important thing that God is trying to tell us, his creation, through the creation of physical light? Rhetorical question, I'll give you the answer. The most important thing that I believe that God is trying to tell us is just as we need physical light to shine down upon this earth to, to, so that we have food, so that we have oxygen, so that we can see and move, just as we need the physical rays of the sun to shine upon this globe, we need the spiritual light of Jesus Christ to shine down upon us in order for us to truly thrive in order for us to truly have peace and joy and hope and in order to sustain 
our spirits. We need the sun, not the S-U-N alone, but the S-O-N to shine down upon us so that we can thrive. And that's why Jesus said in John 6, 35, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Why won't you hunger? Why won't you thirst? Because the light, the rays, the sun of Jesus Christ will shine down upon you and sustain you. It will give you what you need. Another scripture that I want to give you before I move on into my testimony and wrap this up is John 8, 12. In John 8, 12, Jesus said it clearly. I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Now, what does Jesus mean when he said you will have the light that leads to life? See, for all of those who are new to the faith, when you when you surrender, when you give your life to Jesus Christ, something miraculous happens. And what that is, is God sends his his light, a piece of himself, his Holy Spirit to come and live inside of you. We're talking about God. <laughs> wow, God. We're talking about the God of Jeremiah 51, 16, which says the Lord made the earth by his power and he preserves it by his wisdom. With his understanding, he stretched out the heavens. When he speaks in thunder, the heavens are filled with water. That God comes to live inside of you. We're talking about the God of Amos 4.13, which says, the Lord is the one who shaped the mountain, stirs up the winds, and reveals his thoughts to mankind. The light of dawn, he turns the light of dawn into darkness and treads on the heights of the earth. The Lord God of heaven's armies is his name. The God of heaven's armies lives inside of you. And as the God of heaven's armies comes to live inside of you, the next thing he begins to do is just he, as he said, let there be light. And there was light. He says, let there be humility and humility begins to bubble up. He says, let there be grace. Let there be hope. Let there be self-control. Let there be love. And those things begin to bubble up and we begin to be transformed into that masterpiece. And my friends, that's essentially what happened to me. See, before I came to Christ, as is shared in the interview, I was a heathen. Not only did I live in darkness, but I loved the darkness. I dwelled in the darkness. It satisfied me temporarily. My father died when I was five. And my, when my father died, as I got older, I began to look for a father in things. And one of the things that I began to look for a father in was in street culture and, 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 and rap music and listening to men who came from where I came from and who told me what a man was. So I would hear guys talk about selling drugs, so I began to sell drugs. I would hear guys talk about sleeping with multiple women, and that's what I began to do. I would hear guys talk about punching people in the face who disrespected them, and that's what I began to do. And I got out of control. And by the time I was 19, I had built an illegal enterprise where I was bringing in thousands and thousands of dollars a week illegally. But praise be to God, I got involved in a deal with a drug dealer that went bad. And he came knocking on my door and threatened my life. But that kind of woke me up. And I decided, you know what, I can't really hustle anymore. I won't turn to God, but I'm going to just chill until I figure out what I'm going to do next. And what that ultimately led me to was the military. There's more to the story, but get it in my book. I, I explain it all. But I ended up in the military and I stumbled across the SEAL teams. And you would think that the military would give me everything I need. You would think that the military would teach me how to be an upstanding citizen, would teach me how to live in the light. And yes, there were so many principles that I learned about honor and courage and commitment and, and staying committed to the process and following through. And, and I did those things, but there was a part of me that was still living in the darkness. There was a, a big part of me that was still womanizing, that was still lying, that was still trying to find ways to cheat, that was still thought I had it all. My pride was through the roof, especially after I got through SEAL training. There was a song that came out around that time by Kanye West, and it went something like this, you can't tell me nothing. And here I was, this guy who had made it through so much, and I had gotten to this point where nobody can tell me nothing. I treated women horribly, and women, I, you know what? I, I, I did this before, I'm gonna do it again. And women, if you have been treated bad by a man, if you have been abused in any way, listen, on behalf of every single man on the face of this planet, I apologize to you. Because you are to be honored, you are to be respected, you are to be loved like the queen that you are. And if you're in a relationship with a man who is not honoring you that way, 
walk away because you are worthy of greatness. And I was that man that, that didn't treat women as though they were worthy of, great, worthy of greatness. And then fast forward as time went on, and as I began to accumulate money after I made it through SEAL training, as I began to accumulate more relationships, and as I, as I began to gain so much, because, because sometimes success has the potential to destroy you. And that's what happened. Long story short, I ended up finding myself in a situation where I was looking in the mirror and I didn't like what I saw. And I was feeling guilt and I was feeling depression from all of the things that I did and the way I treated everybody. I mean, I was in utter darkness, not because just because of the sin I was living in, but because of the, the results of the sin, sins that I had committed, not just against people, but against myself. And here I was in this dark place trying to figure out how to turn the light on and I'm trying to, fi trying to figure, out, figure it out on my own. How do I turn this light on? How do I get better? How do I love? And I can't figure it out. But I had a brother. And my brother, he had loved, came to know the Lord years before I did. And my brother would never preach to me every single day. But one thing he would say to me once in a while is, Remy, when, not if, but when you hit rock bottom, just remember to cry out to Jesus. And I had fluctuated between atheism and agnosticism depending on the day of the week. And when he would say that to me, I would just laugh at him in the face and mock him. But when I had finally hit this low, low, low point that God allowed me to hit, I literally began to cry out to Jesus. Here I was, this big bad dude who grew up in the Bronx, who went through Navy SEAL training twice, graduated. I'm crying out to Jesus. And as I humble myself and I begin to cry out to the light of the world, the darkness began to be extinguished. And then I took the next step and I surrendered my life to Jesus. And I didn't understand at all. I just knew that I had tried everything else to fix myself and nothing worked. And now I needed to try what my brother said I needed to try. And that was Jesus. And, and, and I completely surrendered. And when I surrendered, I'm going to tell you something. I went from an atheist who didn't want to have nothing to do with God to a person who had fallen completely in love with God. And it was because he had illuminated the darkness in my life. He had revealed who I truly was. He had revealed that he was my father had been my father and wanted to continue to be my father. And it was in that instant that I gave up women, womanizing. I gave up lying. I gave up cheating. I gave up living the wild life that I had just indulged in for many years. And I just began to walk in love and grace with the Lord. I began to treat women as they should be treated. The only woman I have ever been faithful to in my life is my wife. And we've been married for going on eight years. I love my sons. I love people. And my heart and my goal in life is to just allow the love and the light of God that flows down from heaven into me to flow out into this world. Jesus said, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. See, when we come to Christ, it's what did Jesus say? Did he say, would anyone light a lamp and then put it under a basket or under a bed? The problem with so many people in the church is we, we have placed ourselves under a basket or under a bed. Jesus said, would anybody place a light under a basket or under a bed? And Jesus said, no, a light, you, me, pastor, every single person who's committed and surrendered to crisis, our job is to be placed on a stand where your light will shine. And you don't shine so that people could see you. You shine so that through you, people could see him. And then you in return become that light that provides this world everything that it needs. I hope this message blessed you. And I hope that you, if you're here today and you know what, you might be that person that's living in darkness right now. I want everybody to close their eyes, as a matter of fact. And the darkness that you see now, if you feel like it's you, if you feel like you've been struggling and you've been trying to figure it all out on your own and nothing's been working, I just want you to say, Jesus,
forgive me. Send your Holy Spirit to live inside of me. Speak peace, speak grace. Jesus, just as you said, let there be light within me, say, let there be love. Within me, let, say, let there be transformation. Within me, say, let there be peace. Let there be power. Let there be redemption. Thank you, Jesus, for speaking to my heart. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you, I love you, and thank you for having me. Thank you for watching the House of Destiny's YouTube channel. Please subscribe to get all of our latest content. This video was brought to you by all of our generous supporters. If you'd like to give, click the link in the description. We have new episodes every week, so stay tuned. And remember, you're somewhere in the future and you look much better than you look right now.